So let's just get right into it. I have not been in my best state of mind <laughs> over the past year, two years maybe. And on one hand, I've been doing really well in that I overall feel really good about my life and everything, but more of just my uh, coping mechanisms, my way of handling stress has been garbage. And it's been really hard for me to navigate because there's been so many changes going on with um, life and my body and hormones, specifically hormones, that it's hard for me to gauge what is normal, what's okay, and what I need to change and what, I don't know, I just have been very confused about it. So let me rewind a little bit. Last year, you know, I was pregnant with Finn and you know, pregnancy is hard on your body. I really lack motivation when I'm pregnant. Hard to do anything except lay on the couch. Low energy, low motivation, don't do much. And Josh is amazing and he really picked up the slack and was taking care of me, Rook, and the household and himself. So a lot of evenings he would come home and I, you know, have no plan for dinner and no plan to start making dinner. So he would feed us after a long day's work, you know, really carrying the family during that time. Then I had Finn and was mentally struggling with that transition, as you guys know, but was managing in a kind of survival state way. And that's kind of when my temper issues came into play, but I do remember when I had Rook having a short fuse for the first few months. So I kind of wrote it off of like, you know, this is just postpartum anger, I'll get over it after a few months. And it hasn't really happened. I guess I should clarify, I'm not just like angry all the time, I just get really overwhelmed really quickly over things that shouldn't overwhelm me and cause me to get angry. The anger part has gone down a bit in the past few months, but the frustration and just not being able to handle things going slightly out of line, that's been really prominent lately. Oh, anyways, this is me unloading all the clothes onto the bed. Um, I will get into how all this ties into a closet declutter, but let me just get my thoughts out first. This is the closet after I've emptied everything out from the shelf, from the hangers, and from my side of the drawer. My pile of clothes, very overwhelming, but let's get after it. I didn't really have a plan for this. I kind of started sorting based off of what I know I want to get rid of and what I think I want to keep and then refine after that. Anyways, so dealing with frustrations and not knowing how to handle it. So I haven't put much effort or I hadn't put much effort into trying to resolve this because I was like, I don't know where I'm at. Is this all just hormones? And am I going to go back to normal after my hormones regulate after birth? Again, it hasn't gotten much better. So I'm like, is it breastfeeding? Like, do I need to finish breastfeeding before I get a good baseline of where I'm at? And Josh has been really understanding this whole time. He's so, um, just loving and you know accommodating of my craziness but i want a solution even if this is temporary i want a solution and i just it's hard because i don't know again if it's going to go away or if i need to start finding a solution for this or finding other sources of the issue so then comes into play is it overstimulation the overstimulation of motherhood because you know the transition to two kids was hard and i have a grasp on it now and people always say you know you just adapt to having more kids you figure it out and that's true but is just figuring it out the only solution or are or is there still sacrifice in that like i figured out how to manage them but I have nothing else left in me after that, if that makes sense. So like I can handle the chaos of the children, but then that's all the energy I have and I can't handle any other thing going out of line. I think that is a big part of it. Whether or not after I'm done breastfeeding, it does get better in that way, I'm not sure, but my focus right now is let's see if I can zone in on this overstimulation aspect and see if I can help my anger that way. Because the things that set me off 
are usually Josh, which is really unfortunate <laughs> because he doesn't do anything wrong. Like he is just living his life and he helps out around the house. He goes to work. He's amazing with the kids. Literally nothing's wrong. Just something won't go exactly how I would do it or how I imagine it. And I get angry and I am very self-aware, which I'm very grateful for, in that when I'm triggered, I know that I'm being irrationally upset about something, but that doesn't get rid of the feeling. That's the issue, is I can recognize when I'm being irrational, but I still feel the feelings. So I'm not so much having outbursts of anger, because I'm like, no, that's stupid. You shouldn't be upset about this. But I like close off and shut down because I'm trying to not feel these feelings that I'm very much so feeling. And that unfortunately has caused Josh to like walk on eggshells a bit because he doesn't know when I'm gonna be set off about, I don't know, the counter not being wiped down. Which is so hypocritical because again, when I was pregnant, I did no cleaning. I was fine living in the mess. And now I'm so hypercritical about cleanliness. It's like, how is Josh supposed to keep up with this, with my expectations? I think the need for cleanliness definitely comes from the chaos of children. Also back when we first got married, I was always the person who was like, let's be tidy. I don't care how like necessarily clean it is. And Josh was the one who did most of the deep cleaning. And now again, I need things very clean, otherwise I can't relax, which is not healthy. Obviously you wanna have a clean home, but I should be able to not have it be clean all the time and you know, be okay. Where am I going with this? Yeah, so it's just been really frustrating, <laughs> obviously. Getting angry over things I don't wanna be angry about and maybe I should give more examples. Like, I don't even know, it's all stupid things. Like, why did the oil go in this cabinet and not that? It's like, don't you know that we keep this in that cabinet? It's like, why can't I just tell him that this is where it goes without getting angry? Like, these things never used to bother me. And now Josh doesn't know what to do with me because he's scared that I'm just gonna get frustrated all the time, which is sad. So all that being said, I am trying to fix that <laughs> by decluttering my closet. So I don't have control of everything in my life, but I do have control of the items that I have in my home. And I'm hoping by decluttering, and it's gonna be more than just my closet, but I'm hoping that by decluttering, I can reduce the amount of stress in that aspect so that I have more capacity of stress in other areas of my life, I guess. You know, like I can't control how chaotic the children are and I'm glad they're chaotic, you know, that's how kids are. But I wanna be able to handle that and handle other little things going out of line from my own narrative and, you know, just be okay with that. So I'm hoping by, again, reducing the amount of stuff in my house that reduces the amount of cleaning and tidying I have to do, which gives me more peace is the hope. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. I hope you guys can relate, if anyone, to this issue I'm dealing with. Let me talk a bit more about what I'm actually doing here. This is me trying to get a sense of order of my clothes, just getting an idea of what I own. Again, I didn't have a plan going into this. <laughs> just trying to sort out jackets, shirts, sweaters, this method didn't really help me very much. <laughs> Here's some more sorting of my black shirts. I really like black shirts, but I have one nice tight fitted one, one looser fitted, and then this one I decided to turn into like a PJ shirt because I don't need two tight fitted shirts, but I do want one that I can wear just lounging. I have this white t-shirt plus the one I'm wearing, which I'm gonna keep both because I wore this one a lot in the winter, don't ask me why. I have an oversized t-shirt and this more looser fitting graphic shirt. This blue one I haven't worn in a long time, but that's because it's off the shoulder and I think I will after I'm done breastfeeding. The yellow one I also haven't worn in a long time, but I really like it and I think it's because I've just been dressing grubby that I haven't worn it. And then a couple tank tops, which I love to wear during the summer. I recently got this loose blue striped button up, which I've been loving as an overlayer. I also had a white loose button up and I ripped it. So I need to replace that. <laughs> 
And then I have a couple sweaters out just for any weird cold snaps we get in the summer. Oversized hoodie for cozy days and a cropped hoodie that, again, I haven't worn much recently, but it is the summer, so, you know, that's fine. And this blue little zip up that I wear when I'm being more athletic. I have a more tapered, tighter legged blue jean, my black jeans and my slacks, plus the ones I'm wearing. For shorts, I have my jean pair, one that's kind of cotton linen-y that's a bit nicer, and a white jean pair of shorts. And then my like everyday dresses, I have this blue one, which is not so much everyday, it's a bit nicer, but either way. And then a long black dress and a shorter black dress. I do have a bunch of other dresses that I'm not touching right now because again, with my changing body, with postpartum and pregnancy, I'm just not sure what I want from that pile right now. Now it's time to put everything back in the closet and make sure it's all kind of as I'm expecting space-wise. I did end up sorting this a little different than I usually have, which is I kind of went color coordinated instead of by style, just because I don't have that many clothes anyways that I felt like it would be fun to color coordinate it and I'll still be able to find all the things that I'm looking for. So this is what we were dealing with at this point, but I wasn't feeling any better. I actually was still feeling quite anxious about the space. So I decided to take all my PJs out, see what I could do there to uh, consolidate and downsize. PJs I have a really hard time with because I actually have a few sentimental PJs, I guess. So I got rid of some, but kept, you know, more than I need. You really only need, I guess, one pair of PJs, but again, like I have some matching pairs with Josh, which is really cute. I don't want to get rid of those. I have my little sweat set, um, some shirts that are meaningful, but I don't want to wear out in public. Anyways. That did help downsizing that part. And then I also did go through my underwear drawer because it is outrageous. I got rid of all of my nursing bras because they're so just gross and worn and too big on me now, which I'm still nursing, but I can just wear my normal bras now that everything is like regulated. This is the pile of everything I was getting rid of. I think it was like 16 items. And then the next day I did come back to this because again, I wasn't feeling good about this all. You know, I've made progress, but I was like, why do I still feel unsettled? And the whole point was to try and feel settled. So came back to do some organization. The night prior, I did order some storage organization bins off Amazon and they came like same day. So these are gonna be for my shelves to sort my pants. They're made for like paper, but I thought that they would be great for pants and sweaters. And the nice thing is you can pick how many, I guess, shelf pieces to put in. So I took out half on one of them to have room for sweaters. And the other one, like I said, is for my jeans and shorts. And I love this because just stacking the clothes on the shelf was fine, but it would get so out of hand so quickly. And this way I can take, you know, a pair of pants out without knocking the whole pile over. And it helps keep me accountable with how many items I have because I can only fit, you know, so many pairs of pants. So that was looking fantastic. Very happy about that. I also wanted to hang up these snowshoes because they're just sitting on the hat hanger and I would knock it over often, which was annoying. This isn't, you know, the ideal place for these snowshoes, but I didn't have anywhere else to put them. And then I really needed to clear off this uh, dresser because it was too much visual clutter for sure. So this one basket had all of our like winter hats and gloves and everything that was by the front door and obviously isn't there anymore because it's the middle of summer. And then this basket on the left holds all of the baby stuff that I need day to day because again, the boys share a room. So I need to have diapers and things accessible for when Rook is napping in there. And I also just haven't cleaned this out in a long time. So I got rid of like all the breast pads, all the soothers, things that we very much so do not need right now. Put some of those things in our memory bin, put other items in the bathroom where they belong, like the nasal spray. The reason I'm switching baskets is because the one on the left fits on the shelf in the closet better. So yeah, doing that. And then this basket just had some of my softball clothes that I needed to move somewhere else and a bunch of Josh's like winter socks. So I put that on his side of the closet. And then lastly, I took all the hats down and put them in that basket on the shelf because I didn't really have a purpose for the basket. Now I do. And that really just made the space feel a lot 
fresher. And that's the end of it. I hope that this was insightful for you guys. If you're also going through weird mental things, let me know if you've done anything to help your situation. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more declutters for my mental health. Mm -hmm.